welcome back to our very important topic on types of object repository types of object repository so first we'll see the types of object repository then we'll be discussing about limitations and advantages of object repository so types of object repository basically we have two types one is local and the other one is a shared object repository local object repository and shared object repository now so let's go ahead and let's discuss what is this local object repository and what is shared object repository so first let's start with local object repository here before talking about local object repository let us talk few minutes on a concept called actions so just we'll overview the actions here so we have a chapter called actions in that we'll be discussing lot of things on actions like how to create an action how to reuse the action all these concepts will be dealing that in the actions topic as if now we need to concentrate on object repository so i'm not much stressing on the actions so simpler way i can say that actions are nothing but pages in a book can you, i guess you can see action one right here here the uh, just have a look on the my pointer here action one same like that we have action two and action three like this we can create multiple actions so these three actions are four actions so that actions belongs to the same test gui test seven actually the name of this test is gui test seven in that i can create multiple actions so actions are nothing but pages in this book as simple as that basically whenever a topic completes you will take a new page and new topic will be written in a new page same like that here in each action we'll be trying to write an individual functionality the reason behind is that reusability that we'll be discussing in later on but let us concentrate on object repository here so I have an action one let me create two more actions here call to new action Just click okay design call to new action click okay so don't worry about the actions as if now we have a lot of things to discuss on actions so that we will see as you move into the subject so here i have action one action two and action three so my plan is in the action one i am going to write a script which is related to the login so let me explain you here in a notepad so plan so my plan is that i'm going to write, create three actions and i have done it in action 1 i'm going to write login script in action 2 search for a flight Action three, just book it, book the flight, the one what you have searched. So like this, I've splitted my functionalities and each action holds a separate functionality. So action one, so here I'm in action one now. Let me click on record. In action one, I'm just trying to log in. A script has been generated in action one. We are in action one. I guess you can see it here towards your right here. Let me move on to the action two. Just click on this drop down and click on action two. Now you'll get a new test pane. See here action 2 has been highlighted here in a color so action 2 we are in action 2 now let me give some details so that i can search a flight i'm moving on to portland to london and i'm just clicking on flights so these are the list of flights what i have okay so in the action three let me move on to the action three now 
in the action 3 let me select a flight and just enter the passenger name click on order now let me stop the test here order 90 has been completed so action 1 has login script action 2 has what is this uh, searching flight and action 3 has ordering the flight okay so like this we have three things here so let me run the test first it will execute action 1 then action 2 and after that action 3 I'm just running the test. First action will be executed, action 2 and action 3 will be executed followed by action 1. Perfect. Here we go. Successfully done. Order 91 completed. Okay, so now come back here and let's discuss a few things. Let me open here. See, here every action has an object repository actually. Yes, or else move on to your object repository here. Sir, so action one has an object repository, action two has an object repository. And action 3 has object repository. I mean to say your object repository also splitted as actions. Your object repository itself splitted as action. Just have a look on this. Let me move on to the action 1. So your action 1 test pane has a script of login. And if you can have a look on object repository, even it has the same objects. right so if you move on to the action 2 the same story again in the action 2 see here? flight to city find the same thing action 3 here we go order number order select flight passenger name so all these things So what does it mean? Every action has its own object repository. Every action holds its own object repository and the information of that action will be literally stored into that action only. As if now it's good, but one point what you need to remember is whatever it may be, this action 1 and action 2 or action 3 belongs to single test. All these three are in the same test, right? And what is the name of the test here? UI? test 7 so all these three belongs to only one test so it's okay now uh, let's be like this what we do is now so from the action 2 i'm just trying to take the script from the action 2 and i'm just copying from here and let me paste this in action 1 Here we go. In the action one, I have script of op what is that? login as well as flight find. I have two things. But whenever you look at object repository, I have the information of in action one, I have information of only login. I don't have information of these objects in the object repository of action one actually. But I have this information in action two. I do have this objects information but in the action 2 not in the action 1 i have this in the action 2 what the point but anyways i have this information in the same test so if i run the test will it take the data from action 2 will it take that action 1 has find flights information so will it take the data from this local is there any possibility of sharing the 
objects information between the two actions let us have a look on this so what i have done here in the action one have a login as well as flight booking now but whenever you talk about an object repository object repository has only login yes object repository has only login let me run it let's see how it behaves from city object was not found in object repository from the line 6 see here it's saying that it's not there in the object repository actually it is there in the object repository but it's not there in the same action it is there in the action 2 so what does it mean in the action 2 it is not taking that into action 1 so action 2 is information it is not taking into the action 1 even we have the objects here so every action has its own object repository and that is limited to that action only there is no sharing of objects information between the actions so this is what your local object repository is so local object repository is nothing but for each action qdp maintains individual object repository and the information between the actions will not be shared among the other actions okay but here everything goes fine but what is the disadvantage of this Yes, let me give you an example first. Like how to, why exactly uh, this we called as a disadvantage. Why? Because whenever we are trying to work in an organization, there are a lot of chances that we'll be reusing the same type of objects multiple times. If that is the case, we need to load that every time into object repository and the burden on the QTP get increases due to that the performance get effects for the point and even the time waste and there is no concept of reusability if it doesn't share the information between the actions okay so let me explain you that clearly here just have a look on this let's assume that i am trying to test a gmail Okay, if I am trying to test a Gmail, so my process will be like this. I will be logging into the system, have a login script. Then after I am going to test the inbox and I will be logged out. So again, I will be logging into the machine. I will test some uh, compose mail and will be logged out from the system. And again, I will be logging in and I am going to test something called uh, outbox or sent mail and even I will be logging out. So if you look at it, I am using this login multiple times, the same script, even log out also, but let's concentrate on this login. So I am using same login script multiple times, right? So let's assume that I have 10 actions here. So only three, but let's assume that I have 10 actions. In the 10 actions, due to the requirements or due to the functionalities needed, I have written this login script in the action 1, in the action 5, in the action 6, in the action 9. So multiple times I have written the login script. So whenever I write a login script, obviously I need to add the information into object repository again. So in the action 1 I need to add, in the action 5, in the action 6, in the action 9. Everywhere when I write a login script, I need to add the information into object repository. So what's happening here? The duplicate objects are getting existed. And even the, I am increasing the burden on the QDP, right? And there are chances that the performance get effects to overcome this and to save the time to make it reusable. What I am trying to plan it, I am trying to write login only once. Okay, I am going to write login only once. And if I can use that in a multiple actions, then that would be great. Right? So rather than loading it every time, I am going to write it once and I am going to use it multiple times. So I am planning for that. So that doesn't happen with the local, right? Or else I can give you a simple example. See here, I have a team of four members actually. Like we are working on some X application. 
even we are team of four members and we are working on x application obviously the login screen will be same for all of four of us right so i'm a team lead and four members working on with me now my team members so we are working on the same application right so same login screen we have maybe the login credentials are different but login screen will be the same so if login screen is same in the sense the login related object repository also same for us if that is the thing what i am going to do is i am going to create object repository i am going to create object repository away from the qdb not in uft i am going to create it away from the uft and i am going to inform to all my members that whenever you want login information guys don't add it once again don't try to add it don't waste your time i have already created just take it from the location so save the time save the resources so whenever someone want chalo take it from the location use it so whenever my team member want he will take that from and he will use it this is what the shared object repository is create it once and use it multiple times by multiple members in multiple scenarios that is what shared object repository is okay now we have done with the local object repository now in the next video we will be seeing how to create a shared object repository and how to work with a shared object repository so let me close it here in the next video we will be having a look on shared object repository